In this video, I'm going to show you how stacks work in a programming environment. So what we're going to do first is create the stack. You can see at the top of the program, I've imported stack, and then I've created a stack called nums that's going to store integers. I'm going to use a loop to push on 10 different values onto the stack. Say i equals 1, i is less than or equal to 10, and i plus plus. So what this is going to do is allow me to push items 1 through 10 onto the stack. So I'm going to say nums, the name of the stack, dot push, and I'm going to say i. So when it iterates, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can look at the different items on the stack using an iterator or a list iterator because stack implements the iteratable interface. So when I run this program, I'm going to print it two ways. One, I'm going to use a list iterator, which is going to start at the beginning and then print out all the information inside of the stack. And then two, I'm just going to say system out print line nums. And what that's going to do is use the two string method of the stack class to print out our stack. And you can see when I do this, this prints it out using the list iterator. The second one right here just prints it out um, using the two string method. Finally, in this program, I want to show you how to use the method empty in the stack class. So I would say using it inside of a while loop while nums is not empty. Notice I use the exclamation point to say it's not empty. And then I'm going to use the pop method to take items off of the stack. And I say nums.pop. And I'm going to put a space after each one. I'm not going to use print line, I'm just going to use print so it prints on the same line. And I want you to notice the difference between the list iterator, the printing of the stack, and how it pops the items off of the stack. And as you can see, the list iterator and the printing out of the stack prints the numbers 1 through 10. But when I pop the items off of the stack, it gives me 10 through 1, starting with the top of the stack going to the end of the stack. And then finally it ends when the stack is empty using this method. In the second program here, what I want to do is show you some interesting but um, sometimes illegal things that you can do with a stack. I've imported stack from the util package, I've created a stack of integers, and I have filled it with 10 items. Next, just like the last program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop those items off of the stack. So we see there's not a lot of difference from what we've learned prior to this. But if you look down here on number two, what I've done is I've refilled the stack with numbers one through 10. But instead of using the empty method, I've used the is empty method. Now, the stack class does not have a method called is empty. But as you can see, when I compile and run it, it works just fine. The reason is, is that a stack is a vector and the vector implements the list interface. So because it implements the list interface, it has to use all of the methods inside of that interface. And one of those methods is, is empty. So both of these methods, both empty and is empty, work just fine with the stack. You're just using a superclass method as opposed to using a method inside of the stack class. Very legal. But there are some things that you can do that violate the nature of a stack. And that's what I've done down here. Some other methods from the list interface are get, add, and remove. And so what I've done is I've once again filled the stack with numbers 1 through 10, and then I say number.get. Remember, the only way to remove or get an item from a stack is to remove it off of the top. This is not doing that. This is getting something using random access, which violates the definition of a stack. And then I'm going to, not only am I going to get it, then I'm going to remove that item and print out the stack. So you can see that I have got the item, which is at the sixth index, which would be the number seven, and then I remove it. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, missing seven, eight, nine, ten. These violate the very definition of a stack. Also, you can't just add items wherever you'd like to. Because the vector class implements the list interface, it has to have that add method there, but it is illegal to use when using a stack. You can't just add anywhere you want. You have to add to the top. You can see that syntactically it'll work. Compiling, it won't even throw a runtime error, but it is a logical error because you are violating a stack. To sum up, sometimes you'll see people using the isEmpty method to run through a stack, which is completely valid instead of using the empty method.
which is the method of the stack. But remember, even though you can use the superclass methods, it is not proper to use them when you're using a stack. Use something else like an array list or a link list or, or something that, that is supposed to work that way. Remember how a stack is supposed to work.